D.E. Recorder Galaire, my name is James Nagel, welcome to The Irish Nation Lives. It wasn't known at the time, but in July of 1918 the First World War was drawing to a close, and so too was Britain's time as the preeminent world power. This position had been under threat from the United States of America throughout the latter part of the 19th century. The industrial and manpower needs of a protracted campaign had hammered Britain's economy, while that of the United States grew. By 1918, many people seeking independence from the empires of Europe looked to the United States for help and leadership, and amongst them were the Irish and Sinn Féin. Irish immigration to America began during the colonial era, made up predominantly of Protestants of Ulster Scots descent, and many Irish played important roles in the Revolutionary War. On the 4th of July, 1776, a number of Irishmen sat on the Continental Congress and signed the Declaration of Independence. John Barry of Wexford is regarded as the father of the American Navy for his service, and it is believed that up to 40% of George Washington's army was Irish. In the years ahead, they would take part in shaping the politics of this new nation, and in 1829, Andrew Jackson became the first US president of Irish descent. In Ireland, British administrative policy had resulted in massive poverty and independence on the potato crop by a large section of the country. From 1845 to 1851, the crop failed due to blight, and over a million people died, while another million immigrated. In the century after, millions more would leave Ireland, most for the United States, in search of a better life. Working mainly in low-wage labour such as construction or factory work, the Irish formed tight-knit communities and helped new arrivals to find jobs. The United States also became home to a number of Irish revolutionaries. Many of the leaders of the failed 1848 rebellion made their way there, and in 1858 they formed the Fenian Brotherhood. In 1861, the American Civil War broke out, and Irishmen enlisted voluntarily in huge numbers. In New York, Thomas Maher of Waterford, exiled for his role in the 1848 rebellion, raised the fabled Irish Brigade. Irishmen served on both sides of the Civil War and saw action in every major engagement. Up to 200,000 Irish-born soldiers would serve on the Union side, possibly the same number again of Irish descent, and about 20,000 would serve with the Confederate Army. The new waves of Irish immigrants were initially regarded with suspicion and hostility, mainly due to their Roman Catholic religion, but their service in the Civil War won them respect and recognition as loyal and dedicated citizens of the United States. The war came to an end in 1865 and a great number of Irish found themselves demobilised. The Fenian Brotherhood now had at its disposal a large body of trained soldiers and set about planning an insurrection in Ireland. Starting in 1866, a number of Irish raiding parties crossed from the United States into Canada to attack British forts. Most of the attacks were unsuccessful, though the village of Ridgeway in Ontario was captured and held for a few hours. Irish Americans and Civil War veterans were also involved in the failed 1867 rebellion that broke out in Ireland. Later in the year, Thomas Kelly and Timothy Deasy, both former officers in the Union Army, were arrested in England for their roles in the rebellion. As they were being brought to court in Manchester, a mob attacked their wagon and freed them, killing a police officer in the process. Three Irishmen, including Michael O'Brien, who had fought for the Union during the Civil War, were found guilty of his murder and executed. Due to these defeats, the Fenians turned away from armed insurrection, for now, and threw their support behind Charles Stuart Parnell, the leader of the Irish Parliamentary Party in the British House of Commons. John Devoy, exiled to the United States in 1871, allied with Parnell and Michael Davitt of the Land League, who had been agitating for rights for tenant farmers. Known as the New Departure, the Fenians and their sister body in Ireland, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, sought to gain influence in and over any organisation they thought could be used to free Ireland. By the 1880s, there was as large an Irish population in the United States as there was in Ireland. Those of Irish birth and descent had worked hard and were beginning to establish themselves as pillars of industry and politics. Campaigning for land reform, Parnell toured the United States in 1880, spoke in over 60 cities, and collected millions of dollars in donations. In February, he addressed the United States Congress, and all of this brought an unprecedented level of attention to Ireland. In future, Irish leaders would look to its people in the United States for financial and political support. Irish America followed the Gaelic Revival in Ireland and the newfound support for Home Rule in 1912. In 1914, Patrick Pearce toured the United States to secure funding for St. Enda's, and he was followed by Roger Casement, who sought funds for the Irish Volunteers. Both men were supported by Devoy and Clan the Gael, which had succeeded the Fenian Brotherhood. 
A few weeks before the 1916 Rising, an Irish race convention was held in New York which saw the creation of the Friends of Irish Freedom, a group set up to coordinate the various Irish-American organisations throughout the country. It established an Irish relief fund to collect money for the dependents of those who fought in the Easter Rising and included many prominent Irish-Americans, such as Devoy and Judge Daniel Cohallan, a critic and opponent of President Woodrow Wilson. After US entry into the war, President Wilson put forward his 14 points and proposed the creation of the League of Nations, which gave the Irish, and many other peoples, the belief that he would support their claims for nationhood. There are allegations that Britain concocted the German plot to damage Irish-American influence, which it was fearful would lead to Irish demands being addressed at a post-war peace conference. In the years ahead, Eamon de Valera would travel to the United States to raise the Dáil loan and agitate for political recognition of the Republic. The United States will have an important role to play in Irish affairs in the years ahead, and I'll be covering the major events in the US in greater detail over on the Irish Nation Lives podcast. You can find a link in the description, and make sure to follow us on Twitter to be kept up to date with new episodes. There are a lot of fascinating Irish-American people and events that I didn't cover in today's episode, from the Battle of Fredericksburg, where Irish soldiers on either side of the Civil War fought each other, to the darker events, like the draft riots in New York. Comment below with what you think are the defining moments in Irish-American history. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content as we move towards the beginning of the War of Independence. Ahorda, thank you for joining me on The Irish Nation Lives. Slongafold.